Hey Church, welcome to Liberty Church London's online service. My name is Tasha and my husband Johnny and I are the pastors of this community and we love this community. We love everyone who connects in online, everyone who comes in to in-person services, everyone who calls Liberty Church London home and to everyone who's watching for maybe the first time. We're so grateful that you've joined us today. And so we're going to start our service today by just spending some time worshipping God. I'd love to encourage you to engage in whatever way that looks like, whether it's dancing around your living room because no one's watching or whether it's just sitting and reflecting. Whatever's best for you to connect with God, I want to encourage you to do that right now. So we're going to head over to Andy now. He's going to lead us in worship. The dark tried to hide you and steal you away. Death tried to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you, he tried but he lost. You cannot be stopped. Cried for freedom, we tore down the walls. The weight of our burden, you carried it all. Our fears and our failures, and dead on the cross. You cannot be stopped. Breaker of chains, Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. We stand on your victory and shout at your praise. Miracle maker. Awesome in power, relentless in love You cannot be stopped Mover of mountains, breaker of chains Jesus has triumphed over the grave Sing hallelujah, the battle is won Nothing can stand against our God There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is nothing. There is nothing. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is you can't do all things 
God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. There's no prison wall you can't break through No mountain you can't move All things are possible There's no broken body you can't raise No soul that you can't save All things are possible All things are possible Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you that you chose to send your son to die on a cross so that we could come into relationship with you, so that we could be connected with you, we could encounter your love, and that we could be free from all our sin and shame. And we just thank you for that, God. We pray that we would come into a greater realization of that today. In your name we pray, amen and amen. We say it every week and if you're regular you'll have heard this every single week but it's because it's true. We believe that prayer makes a difference in our world and we've seen it time and time again that when we pray God breaks into the situation and makes a difference. So if you have a prayer need today can I encourage you right now to click the link in the description below that says ask for prayer. Fill it out and we can be praying with you this week and for you this week. Not because our prayers are any better or we're any more connected to God because that is not true, but because we want to stand with you and, and do life as a community. And sometimes it's just so, so helpful to know that other people are praying for you. And I can't wait to hear the praise reports of how God is going to break into your life. And so if that has happened, if God has made a difference, please do let us know in the praise report by clicking the link below so that we can celebrate with you because we want to celebrate all that God is doing in your life. If you're new or newer to Liberty, we want to say welcome. We're so grateful that you've chosen to join us today. And can I encourage you to click the connect with us button below and fill out a connect card so that we can reach out to you this week, get to know you, find out how you're doing and just generally help you make Liberty Church London a place that you can call home. And for those of you who do call Liberty Church London home, I want to encourage you right now to give your tithes and offerings. God calls us to give 10% of all that we earn back to him. 10%. What does 10% look like for you? What income are you getting in? What does 10% look like for you to give to church, to God? Give back to God through the church. You know, God calls us to give. He calls us to give because he wants us to trust him with our finances. He wants him to be our provider, not our jobs, not our student loan, not anyone else. God needs to be our provider. And so when we give 10%, we actually rely on him because we're only left with 90%. But I can guarantee from my personal experience that 90% goes way further than 100% ever did. In a moment, Johnny is going to bring an, a message for us, which is the beginning of a new series called Beyond Sunday, which I am super pumped about and really excited about. So do get your notebook out, get ready to engage in this new series. But let's first go to church news. Okay, Reza. You're going to get it this time. I know you said the last 14 takes, but this is the one. This is the one where you won't be an idiot sandwich, where you'll just get the words right, you'll enunciate and pronunciate. Right. Quick hair flip. And we're ready. Hey, church family. My name is Reza Solari, and my wife Katie and I co-lead the community groups here at Liberty Church London. We're both super excited to announce that our summer season kicks off the week of May 24th and runs through the week of July 26th. Community groups are an essential part of what makes Liberty Church London feel like home. It's where a real relationship happens, so I really encourage you to sign up. Please visit libertychurchlondon.com for all the details of the amazing groups we have out there. There is something for everybody. Oh, and P.S., we actually have in-person groups this year. Yay! For in-person groups, real people, I can touch them. Yay! 
and some Zoom people. Well, we have a Zoom group for you people. It's there. We still love you. Well, hey there, Liberty Church London. I am so pleased that you're able to join us today. My name is Johnny. I'm married to Tasha, who you've already met. Together, we lead Liberty Church London. I'm super excited because this morning, I get to start a brand new teaching series that we're doing for the next seven weeks called Beyond Sunday. Beyond Sunday is our hope and our prayer that each and every one of us, everybody connected to Liberty Church London, is going to be inspired and equipped to live out their faith, not just on Sundays, but every single day of the week, wherever it is that we live, wherever it is that we work, wherever it is that we play, we'll be able to live out our faith. Now, I know many of us have been following Jesus for quite a long time, and we, we don't simply have faith on a Sunday, and it would be unfair to suggest that we do. However, I do believe there is room for improvement. All of us can take a step forward in living out our faith. And so my hope and prayer is everyone takes a step forward. If you're new to church and new to faith, this, will, this may be a very first step. But maybe you've been following Jesus for a long time, and this will be a, you know, you're, you're further down the road, but it'll still be a step forward in living out your faith. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to get into some foundations which I think are helpful for this series. Let's pray. Father God, speak to us now. We want to hear your voice. Amen. Well, there are three foundations I think it would be really helpful for us to start with at the beginning of this series. Three foundations. And the first one is this. Jesus is the hope of the world. Jesus is the hope of the world. The local church is not the hope of the world. Jesus is. It's so important that though the church is vitally important, it's got a significant purpose, and I believe that everybody needs to be planted in a local church community, it is super important for us. We are not the hope of the world. We are not the hope of the world. It's such a relief to me as a pastor of a church. Uh, I don't have to have that level of expectation. Oh, I've got to lead the hope of the world? No. Hey, if you know me at all, you wouldn't want me to be leading anything like the hope of the world. We, as the church, we are the bride of Christ, it says in the Bible. In, in Acts chapter 1, it says we are the witnesses to Jesus. We are the witnesses. So he is the hope of the world, but we're witnesses to that. So it's our job as a church to point to Jesus, to show people Jesus, to reveal to our friends, to our family, to our colleagues, to the barista at the coffee shop we go to, to the guys we see at the pub. It's our job to reveal to them that the, the answer to the deep questions they've got, to the pain that they've got inside of them, to the longing and hurting of their soul, the answer is called Jesus and they can know him. He's the hope of the world. We've got the hope of the world and the world needs hope. And we, we as witnesses need to share that hope with the world. The local church is not the hope of the world. Jesus is. But the local church are witnesses to him. We are to witness to the world about Jesus. The second point is this. We are the church. We don't go to church. We are the church. We don't go to church. Church is not an event that happens on a Sunday. It's not a particular building. That's not what a church is. You don't need to have a steeple to be a church. That's not a church. The church is the people. Specifically, specifically when the, the saints, the people who follow Jesus, gather together, that is church. Wherever it is we gather, that is the church. We get the word church from the Greek word ecclesia, which simply means the gathering of the saints. So when we gather at the Jazz Cafe, which is a nightclub in Camden Town, we're the church. When we gather online because COVID meant uh, that we can't meet in person, that's the church. We're the church. Whatever happens, wherever you go, whatever you do, we are the church. If you meet up in a discipleship circle, we're the church. If you join a community group, hopefully you will. In fact, scrap that, you will do it. Even, even if you can't come in person, we've got the one on Zoom, which I'll be leading. So join a community group. And when we join a community group, when we meet in our community group, we're, we're the gathering of the saints. It's the church. When we have a discipleship circle, circle, that's the church. When we even go out for coffee with someone else, that's church. Church is the gathering of the saints. So we don't go to church. We are the church. And foundation number three is this. 
Following Jesus isn't a spectator sport. Following Jesus isn't a spectator sport. It was never something that we were meant to just watch. Obviously, because the church is us, we can't really watch it, but there is this culture in the UK and maybe other Western countries of, of going to a place, watching something, and then leaving, and, having, and then you can tick the box saying church. But that's not accurate, because we are the church, and following Jesus, not a spectator sport. Each and every one of us needs to be involved. Jesus himself said this, he said um, in Luke 9, 23, then he said to them all, they, uh, <laughs> he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple, I'll get there, whoever wants to be my disciple needs to take up their cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to be my disciple must take up their cross daily and follow me. It's not a spectator sport. Each and every one of us needs to pick up our cross. And we all know what Jesus did on a cross, right? Each and every one of us needs to pick up our own cross and follow him. It's not a spectator sport. It's a journey that we're all on together. It doesn't say, whoever wants to be my disciple, pick up some popcorn and watch me. It doesn't say that at all. It's a journey we're all on together. Why have I made these three points? Well, because I think if we're going to live out our faith beyond Sundays, we need to understand that church is not somewhere we go. It's not a time of day. It's who we are. And that the local, the local church is super important, but Jesus is the hope of the world. It's our job to witness to people about Jesus. And it's our job to get involved, to get stuck in. It's not a spectator sport. Today, I specifically want to look at the topic of the power of daily service. The power of daily service, of being a servant day in, day out. I believe that's what we're called to be. Uh, Mark, no, Matthew 4, 18 to 20, is, is a story where Jesus is walking along the lake. He's walking along the sea of Galilee and he comes across some men who are fixing their nets in their fishing boats and he says to them come and follow me and they leave their nets uh, they leave the other fishermen they even leave their father and they go and follow Jesus come and follow me we're all called by the same call by the way each one of us I believe Jesus says that to us in different ways come and follow me but what does that mean what's really helpful is to understand a bit of context. You see, this isn't 21st century UK. This is, this is 2,000 years ago in the Near East. And 2,000 years ago in the Near East, a Jewish boy's hopes and aspirations wasn't to be a footballer, wasn't to be a celebrity, wasn't to be on Towie. A, a Jewish boy's hopes and aspirations were to become a disciple to a rabbi. That's what they wanted to achieve. That was the pinnacle of education. That's what every single boy was aiming for. And then the boys, sorry, not the girls, just the boys, the boys would go and be taught the Torah. They'd learn the five books of the law off by heart. But the thing is, those who weren't good enough, those who didn't stand out from the rest, those who weren't above the rest, well, at different stages in their education, they'd be kind of sent away. And instead of continuing their education and becoming a disciple to a rabbi, they'd go and learn their father's trade. The rabbi was someone who a disciple would want to become. So only the best of the best of the best of the boys would get the opportunity as a result of passing each part of their education to become a disciple. And then when they became a disciple, their job was to learn to, to kind of be a carbon copy of their rabbi. Now Jesus was a rabbi. And he's walking down the, the lake and he comes across these fishermen, these guys who had the trade. They had learned their father's trade, Zebedee, one of, uh, the, one of the fathers was actually there. Um, and they'd learned his trade, they'd learned to be fishermen and suddenly they've been given this second chance. This rabbi says to them, come and follow me, come and be my disciple, learn to be like me in every single way. That's what a disciple is, you're learning to be like your rabbi. And a rabbi, um, rabbi means teacher, but actually for the disciple, 
um, for, the, for the person who was with them, learning from them day in, day out, listening to the way they'd speak, listening to the patter of their voice almost, that's how deeply they try and become exactly the same as their rabbi. Well, other people would call the rabbi teacher, but the disciples, they call the rabbi Lord. The rabbi would be their Lord, would be in charge of everything they did, thought, said. Everything they experienced. As followers of Jesus, we're called to not just look up to Jesus, not just to think he's great, not just to think he was a good historical figure. No, we're called to try and model our lives in the pattern of his life, to become just like him. Those disciples on that very first day as, they, as Jesus walked along the seashore, uh, we too, as I said, have had that call. We too are to be disciples just as they were disciples, to learn to be more and more like Jesus. And one thing Jesus definitely was, was a servant. John 13, verses 3 to 5, and then 12 to 15 says this. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around them. After washing their feet, this is verse 12, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I am your Lord and teacher, I've washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I've given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Just a quick, just a quick side note. Some theologians believe the reason he says teacher and Lord was because Judas, who went on to betray him, clearly didn't see him as Lord. So he was saying, ah, you call me teacher. It was like a like a quiet sort of dig at him, I guess. Anyway, servanthood. Jesus, even though he had full authority from the Father, chose to be a servant. When Tasha and I moved back from New York to the UK and moved down to London, um, Tash needed a new handset for her phone. So uh, we, found, we got a deal um, on a Sony handset it wasn't great uh, but on a Sony handset the deal was a really good deal um, when you got the Sony handset which didn't cost us any extra you got a free PlayStation 4 now this was in all, uh, like August 2018 and so PlayStation 4s were still pretty new then and you got a free PlayStation 4 so we got we got this phone and we almost thought will we really get a PlayStation it doesn't seem likely that seems a bit too good to be true but lo and behold we got a brand new PlayStation 4. Now, I'm not a gamer. Tasha isn't a gamer. We don't play games. So quite a few times uh, when we were kind of starting to gather people for the church in our flat in Camden Town, people would come down uh, to our house, come in and see the PlayStation 4 and say, oh, wow, you got a PlayStation 4. What games do you play? Maybe we could play online together. What's your favorite game? Tell me more about it. I love games. I've got a PlayStation 4 too. And then I kind of have to sheepishly say, well, actually, we've never played a game on it. It's never had a game played on it in its life. We just use it to play DVDs and to kind of watch Netflix, and that's it. And people will be shocked going, whoa, like, do you not know how good a PS4 is? Do you not know how much it can do, what it can achieve? It's so good. The graphics are this, the games are whatever, you know, it's amazing, it's brilliant. They wax lyrical for a little while about a PS4 and how great it was and how it was being completely underused and not used correctly by us because we put a DVD in from time to time and watch Netflix. Now, I kind of understood what they were saying, but the reality was that the PS4 was doing exactly what it was meant to do. It was serving us. Like, PS4s weren't created to be the boss. We're the boss, and if we want the PlayStation 4 to play a DVD, probably some really cheesy kids movie because we've got two young children, then that's what it needs to do. That's what it needs to do. If we want to watch Netflix or Prime or Now TV, any of the streaming sites are all great, um, 
that's what it needs to do for us. It, like, it may have the possibility that it could play a game, it may not. What we need right now is what it should do. Why? Because the PlayStation belongs to us. We don't belong to the PlayStation. I believe we're all called to be servants. Now, Jesus clearly had a greater purpose. He could achieve greater things. He was God incarnate on earth. But he chose to serve and do what the people he was amongst needed at that time. That's what a servant is. They, they do what is required of them at any given moment. You and I, as we're called to follow Jesus and become more like Jesus, need to take on that same attitude. You may have um, a, a different purpose he's created for you at some point. And maybe you'll live it out soon. Maybe you'll live it out later. And I don't know. But what I do know is every single day as we follow Jesus, we need to be servants. And so, yes, we're, if you know if you're if you're hoping to become a uh, a pastor or a Bible teacher and you're studying theology, yeah, keep doing that. Keep studying. Keep learning. Keep preparing. Or maybe you're going to be leading worship one day and you and you're just you know practicing. Your guitar, playing your instrument, learning to be more anointed, like to, to feel the anoint, anointedness of a worship leader. Anointedness, is that a word? Um, well, if that's you, yeah, keep going, keep pressing in, keep doing it. Whatever you feel God's calling you to do, sort of in the big picture, keep preparing for it. Get yourself ready so God can use you in that role at the right time. However, do not neglect the fact that each and every one of us, and this started with Jesus, are called to be servants and serve the people who are in our world today. To serve in whatever way is required of us today. If someone needs a servant and you're like, I can't do that job, I'm a worship leader, that is not okay. That is not a kingdom attitude to have. Jesus clearly didn't have that attitude. He came to serve, not to be served. And he taught us how to be like him, so we need to be servants, not to be served. Does that make sense? So each and every one of us needs to step into that role of serving. It's not a glamorous role. I mean, we talk about servant leadership, and it's true. We believe leaders need to be servants, and that's part of your leadership. But it still doesn't make it glamorous tagging on leadership to the, uh, to the word. Serving is about denying yourself, choosing not to do what you want to do, but willingly and happily and enthusiastically doing just what needs to be done at the time. You know, we're um, going to be moving church venues in July. We're at the Jazz Cafe currently in Camden Town, but we can't stay there long term. It's been a great venue. We love it and they've been fantastic with us. But the deal was always it was going to be a temporary thing during this COVID uh, rule relaxation season. In July, once the, uh, hopefully everything has been uh, removed, all the restrictions have been removed, we're moving into the Holiday Inn in Camden Town. I'm so excited for it. But when we get there, things are going to be different because in the Jazz Cafe, when it comes to setup, it's all set up for us. It's a nightclub. It's always got a stage. It's always got lights. It's always got a PA system. Uh, we can just walk in and kind of plug in and play and get on with it. That won't be the case when we change venues. With our PA system, we're going to have to put it all together. We're going to have to set up the lighting and the stage and prepare the room and the, uh, prepare the lounge area. There's just going to be a lot of work. Is it doable? Yes, absolutely. But will it be more effort than just turning up and plugging in and playing? Yeah, it's going to be more effort. So what do we need? We, well, we need to have a servant attitude, all of us, myself, Tasha included, to get that job done. To be able to prepare the venue so we can gather in person safely and with a spirit of excellence and hopefully see people's lives transformed. We need to, we need to serve. We need people who are going to say, okay. I'm going to get up. I, I may have this in my future. I may do this for a job. This might be my title. But as part of being belonging to Liberty Church London, I'm going to get up early on a Sunday. I'm going to help set things up. And I'm going to stay late. I'm going to help pack things away. I'm going to serve. Why? Because that's what's needed to be done. That's what is needed at this time. We're all called to be servants. 
there's three, no, four points, four practical steps, I think, for us to help us be servants. Let me go through them one by one, okay? To help us be a servant, not just on a Sunday, but every single day of our lives, in whatever situation we find ourselves, whether it's in our work, whether it's in our university, whether it's at home, whether it's with our neighbours or our friends, wherever we are, I think we need to begin the day by praying. We should say something like, Jesus, I want to be where you are. Lead me to serve you by serving someone else today. Jesus, I want to be where you are. Lead me to serve you by serving someone else today. When we start our day with that prayer, with that attitude, that we're going to be intentionally looking and seeking some way and someone to serve. In fact, asking Jesus through his Holy Spirit to, to help us see exactly where we need to be serving. Then we will be a servant. If you've got that focus, that mindset, that intentionality about it, wherever it is you are, whether it is your university, whether it's your workplace, whether you're just in a coffee shop, if you're like, I'm going to serve, show me who to serve, you're not going to be disappointed. Jesus is going to show you who to serve. There will be people who need serving in your world. And you get to be like Jesus. He was a servant, and as we follow Jesus, we become more and more like him. We get to do that. We get to be servants. Start your day by asking Jesus to show you who to serve. The second tip is this. Refer to the app for your daily challenges. So we've put together some daily challenges, just practical tools to help us go beyond Sundays in our in our, in our living, in our lives, in our day-to-day -day as we follow Jesus. So on our app, which you can download from the, you know, the app stores, it's uh, Liberty, Liberty Church Global is the app, Liberty Church Global. You'll be able to find some suggestions, some tips, some daily challenges to help you to grow in following Jesus beyond Sundays. Number three, share your practice with a friend. Talk about how you've encountered the presence of Jesus when you pick up the towel to serve. You know what you're going to find? You're going to find as you serve, as you do unto others, you're going you're to encounter Jesus more and more. You're going to feel closer to his presence. In fact, you may see his face in the eyes of those people who you serve. Years ago, like years and years ago, um, I was meeting a friend of mine in Liverpool, uh, where I grew up, for coffee. He'd been in uh, Africa for a few months, so we were catching up. I wanted to hear about his trip. And as, I, as we walked to the coffee shop, we passed people who were selling the big issue on the street. And then we sat down, we chatted a bit about Africa, but then we also got into uh, one of our hobbies at the time, which was church bashing. We like to slate our church because it wasn't doing enough. And in this case, we were like, well, what about the homeless people? There's people homeless on our streets. They've got no house to live in. They've got no shelter, no regular source of food. And what is the church doing? Urgh. And I got really angry. We both got really angry. And then both of us almost simultaneously felt the Holy Spirit kind of give us a slap and say to us, you're the church, you're the church, and you walk past them, you're the church, and you're sat here slating other parts of the church, of your body, for not doing anything about the people who you walked past. <laughs> okay, Jesus, okay, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> Kind of makes your voice go high pitch, that sort of thing. So we made a plan. We said, okay, well, next week, let's meet up at this time. You're free, I'm free, let's meet up at this time. And let's just go for a walk, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, and go wherever we feel called to go, and do whatever we can to serve the people we meet. Unsurprisingly, and we did it, we met up, same time, same place, prayed for a while, went out, unsurprisingly, we met lots of people who were homeless. We did. We met lots of people in Liverpool who were homeless. So we started to, uh, we, we went and bought a load of sandwiches from Tesco and gave them out so people had food. The next week we did it again. We actually made sandwiches because buying sandwiches were quite expensive. So we made a load of sandwiches. We each had a rucksack uh, filled with sandwiches and lots of other things which might be helpful for someone who was homeless, like a clean underwear, etc. 
and we went out and we prayed and we felt led down this street and this street and this street and we met lots of people who were again homeless so we we gave out sandwiches and things that other people may need boxes etc and uh, we prayed for people it was amazing just by being there we got this opportunity to pray for lots of people and we kept doing it week in week out we go every thursday night out and visit well we'd say visit the homeless but it's more we just go out ready to serve willing to serve whoever we encountered in the streets of liverpool that night one one night we ended up uh, unknowingly walking into the red light district in Liverpool and um, it was something which I'd never encountered before and it was sort of shocking to see and we realized where we were and what was going on and what the what the women were doing in that area but also what the men who were in that area were doing and <laughs> there was this one guy and we were sort of walking just behind him and my friend turned to me and said oh I think we need to we need to give him it's like some scripture we need to tell him something from the bible and i didn't know what so so my friend he wrote down a passage from romans just kind of quickly wrote it down and said let's give it to him and then for some reason he wrote it down so he gave me the actual piece of paper with the passage on said as we and he's like as we walk past uh, just say to him excuse me mate you drop this give him the piece of paper and then we'll we'll be gone <laughs> and so the great plan so we're walking past but I was about half a step behind my friend and I, I gave him the piece of paper and, and as we turned to keep walking I kind of had eye contact with him which I know I, I didn't want to have but I knew what was going to happen and he said he was very very scarce like hey mate what's this and he had eye contact with me so I couldn't run on so I said to him well it's what it is, is we're Christians and we just felt God wanted to say something to you. So we wrote something down, it's from the Bible, and we gave it to you. Thanks very much, good night, we're gone. But <laughs> that's not how it goes, does it? As I turn to run away, literally run, the guy goes, Hey mates, I can't read. <sighs> so there I was, stood in the middle of the red light district in Liverpool, and a lot of people had like heard this guy shout so you know quite visibly in the red light district reading the bible out loud to a person i'd never met before but who was in that area because he was looking to to spend time with the people who work there what a bizarre situation i don't know what happened as a result of that but by stepping up and saying okay god i'm willing to serve you show me where i should go wow did i have some crazy experiences and wow i think people heard about jesus who maybe had never heard about him before join the team <laughs> live to share to london we're a team we're a team of people we're a community but we're also a team it's two things we're, we're a team of people who want to see god's kingdom come and it will be done in london as it is in heaven so we'd love you to join the team and, and serve the church. Serve as we be the people of God gathering in his name to proclaim him and witness about him to the people of London. And there's many things that need to be done. As I mentioned already, when we change venues, there's going to be lots of hard work to set up and tear down. But there's so many different teams already which we need you to be involved in. Come and serve on these teams. There's a kids team we're trying to build because at the moment you may have noticed if you've been in person there's only a few children but you know how you get more kids? By having some good kids work. And then when kids come, guess what? They always bring their parents or family with them. They never come alone. So we'll grow because their family will come. So come and help us build an amazing kids work. Come serve on the worship team. Get involved. Get involved in the guest experience team. It's probably, well, I mean, every I was going to say it's probably the most important team, but you could say that about any team. But it's super important. Or maybe you're great at PA and AV, you know, production stuff. It's practical. It's hard. Trust me, not everyone's gifted in it. Or maybe you're great at using um, computers. <laughs> so you see how I don't know what to talk about. Using computers to live stream a service because actually we're hoping that once we're in our new venue, rather than having a pre-recorded service like this, we'll be able to live stream. So those of us who can't come in person or are watching online, well actually it'll be like you're in the room with us. So maybe you know, you've got some know-how about cameras and streaming 
come and get involved, or maybe you're just a quick learner and you're willing to serve, let us know. Join the team. Surf. Live Church London is here because we want to build God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Our approach to church isn't to try and build a approach to church. See, I did it. I fell for the trap again. Our approach to building God's kingdom isn't to build one large service in the city centre that anyone uh, can travel to from around the city. No, we want to build a local community in a local community. A local community of followers of Jesus in a local community. Right now we start with Camden Town. But then we want to start another one down the road. And another one down the road. And another one down the road. Our hope, our hope, our dream for this is that every single local community in London will have a local Liberty Church community gathering there each Sunday, able to show them and be witnesses to them about who Jesus is. But we can't do that unless we're servants. Unless we're all servants, unless we all step up and say, yes, I'm in. Jesus calls us to be like him. Come and follow me. Learn to be like me. And Jesus was a servant. Now, maybe you're watching today and you wouldn't say you're a Christian. You wouldn't say you're a follower of Jesus. You're watching because you're watching. Maybe you fell down a YouTube rabbit hole, it happens to the best of us, and somehow you've started with funny cat videos, and now you're watching a Christian church service, and you just don't know how you got here, but you did. Well, I want to say to you, I said it already, but that invitation Jesus gave to the guys on the beach who were mending their nets that day, he gives you exactly the same invitation. He invites you to come and follow him. And when you follow him, it is the greatest adventure you can go on. Is it easy? No. I mean, look what happened to those first disciples. It wasn't easy. It was probably the hardest thing they ever did. It might be the hardest thing you ever do, but it's the right thing to do. It's the best thing to do. That longing inside of you, the thing where you're looking for answers. You don't even know what questions you're asking, but you need answers. Jesus is the answer. He's the fulfillment of everything. And he's asking you to follow him. So if you would like to follow Jesus, if you'd like to say for the first time ever, or maybe the first time in a long time, okay, I'm in. I want to follow Jesus. Well, then I want to give you a chance to now. You see, the first step in following Jesus is to say yes. Say, okay, I'm coming. It's a lifelong journey. It's a journey that we do in the, in the context of community. Uh, so we want to be that community for you. We don't do it on our own. It doesn't work on our own. It's really important to be planted in a local church community. I said that at the beginning of my message, but it's totally true. Come and be part of this church community. We want to walk this journey with you. But that first step, that first decision is yours and yours alone so if you want to make that decision i'm going to say a prayer for you right now father god i pray for anyone and everyone who wants to follow you today give them the courage and the passion required to follow you wherever you go help them to change the direction of their life away from selfishness and, and hoping for personal gain to choosing to live your way and to be a servant God, help them to live out the life that you have got before them, wherever it takes them, wherever they end up doing. Help them to follow you all the days of their life, to be Christians. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, if you made that decision for the first time or the first time in a long time, let me say to you, congratulations. It's the greatest decision you can make. I already said it's not necessarily easy. In fact, it probably won't be easy, certainly at times, but it is the right life to live. You may have already done this, but in the description below, there's a, there's a, a link that says uh, connect card, online connect card, connect with us, something like that. Click that link and fill out the online connect card you find. As I said, you may have already done it, but please do it again and tick the box that says, I made the decision to follow Jesus. Please make sure you put your address in there as well, because we want to send you a gift of a Bible. We want to send you a gift of a Bible. You may already have a Bible. You may have a hundred Bibles. You may have a Bible on your phone. But we want to give you a gift of a paper Bible to mark this day, the day you said yes 
to following Jesus. It's the best decision he can make. It really, really is. Thank you so much for your time today. I love you, church. I can't wait to see you again soon. Thank you so much, Johnny, for that incredible word. I want to encourage you to watch it again, to read through any notes you made, and really take serving beyond Sunday. What does daily service look like for you? So if you're new or newer, I just want to say again, thank you for joining us and we'd love to connect with you. And maybe you've been watching online for a while, but never actually joined us in person. Can I encourage you to do so? We love meeting together in person at the Jazz Cafe in Camden Town, and we would love for you to join us. In fact, if you join us next week or the week after, we've got a small gift to give you to say thank you for coming and joining us in person. I hope you have an amazing week and can't wait to see you soon.